Well, we've talked about the Penn State way too early lineup, the Ohio State way too early lineup with a lot of freshmen coming in, and you guys have been asking, so here we go. Let's talk some Iowa wrestling way too early lineup breakdown. Just in 2021, the Hawks won a national title, and in 2022, they unfortunately left the tournament with a third place trophy, but how exactly are they going to look in 2023? They're losing a lot, but gaining some in other areas, plus keeping some of their very high placers. So will they be good, better, or stay about the same? Well, let's try to answer some of those questions in the next few minutes. But first, we cannot forget... Hey everyone, my name is Tanner, and welcome back to True Tan Wrestling. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, and if you really want to go back on the True Tan Wrestling channel, my first ever video was on the 2022 Hawkeye team, and their weird lineup questions way in the beginning of the season. So if you want to benchmark, go check that out, I guess. I promise the quality of the videos have definitely gotten better, though. And the quality of the channel has only gotten better because of you guys. If you want to show a little bit more support, I do have Patreon, so you can support me on there. But I know we're all striped for cash, so don't worry, I'll still be making content regularly on here. But also, don't be shy to leave a like. Plus, feel free to leave a comment with any questions or concerns or topics you might want to talk about. I'd love to hear what you have to say. But now, let's really dive into this new Iowa lineup. Now, one interesting thing about Iowa's team, and one reason that shows why wrestling is constantly evolving, was the fact that Iowa was easily the heavy favorite to win it all again this past season. However, as the season went on and got longer, Penn State, along with Michigan, both slowly loaded up in the second half, and it was looking more and more bleak for the Iowa wrestling team. For starters, Michael Kemmer did not wrestle till after the midpoint of the season, and he clearly had a torn shoulder, but was still pretty productive, to be honest. Spencer Lee obviously would pull himself out from the season after only wrestling three matches matches, and he had two torn ACLs. Plus, Jay and Ironman would tear his ACL very, very, very late in the year, which is a big impact to his style. Then their lineup was kind of all over the place at times, with Muir missing a few duels here and there, along with Stud 125 backup Ayala also tearing his shoulder. So it was just a mess at times, and I kind of felt bad, to be honest. However, we cannot forget that Iowa is one of, if not the best wrestling school in history, so they for sure had their highs like Jacob Warner making his first ever national finals and gain a few All-Americans to place third. They are losing a ton of seniors that scored massive points, but even with those seniors leaving, I think they still have a chance coming into the 2023 season to be a powerhouse and compete with the top teams, and they might be able to hold off a complete rebuild till 2024-2025 because they still have a super strong nucleus coming back. Obviously, at 125, Spencer Lee will be making his return, and hopefully he returns as dominant and strong for the Hawkeye lineup. However, before we move on, let's talk about Spencer Lee's situation for a bit first. Now, getting surgery on two ACLs is a pretty big procedure, so I hope he's taking it seriously and takes his time to come back to the mat carefully and strategically. Not having 100% Spencer Lee is still a pretty good Lee, I'll say that, but I know myself and other fans would love to see him back to his dominance one last time and completely healthy. It's also good to know that he has a red shirt to blow, so if he's not re fully recovered or needs some more time, he can use his red shirt again and then come back for the next season, but I doubt that option will happen considering he wants to be full go into freestyle for the 2024 Olympic Games. Also, Drake Isle will now use his red shirt, and due to his shoulder tear, I'm not sure if we will see him as much as we did at Opens like we saw him last year. I think he might just develop and recover so he is ready to go in the 2024 season, plus a season in the Hawkeye lineup and all the Opens he did before he was injured and in the lineup easily made some massive gains for the young Hawkeye wrestler. Yabaro also got some time in the spotlight last year, and at times I thought he was going to be the guy, especially with Ayala's shoulder tear late in the season. At the end of the day, we had Ayala last year, but hopefully the Lee is back and ready to go because he is the best option they have, and he is clearly the top 125 coming into this season. 133, they will have a massive player gone in the Iowa star Austin DeSano. However, they do have an option to possibly get some good NCAA points. Colin Shriver is more than likely going to be the guy for the Hawks, and he was in redshirt all last season, but then randomly one weekend they starred him that Illinois Northwestern duels, where he dropped two matches to multiple-time All-American wrestlers in Beard and Cannon. At the time, people thought DeSanto was going to be done for the year, but that was all speculation and rumors, and that never was the case. Shriver looked all right during these matches. He did not win, but those are two top-tier guys, like I said, and he wrestled them pretty tough. He does have wins over national qualifier-level guys like Kohler of Ryder, Crawford of Missouri, and Biscoglia of UNI, but also took some interesting losses, but that is okay. It, it happens during retro seasons, plus he still has 
has three years of eligibility left, so there is room to develop for sure for the top Iowa recruit. 133 in the Big Ten is still super tough, but maybe he can still fit in nicely to the landscape. 141 easily has all the news with a Stanford transfer, Real Woods, for sure going to be the guy next year for the Hawks at 141. All drama connected aside, he will for sure be the top option for Iowa for the next two years. I thought maybe Murin would drop back down to 141 and Renya would be the 149, but let's move to 149 before we bring those two into the video uh, too much. Not to skip over Real Woods, he's a stud, played six last year, and will definitely be a finalist contender, but 149 is a little bit more interesting where 141 is just Real Woods. So yeah, 149, Max Murin is for sure going to be the guy one last time for this 149 spot with his last year of eligibility. Pine is some top high school recruits like Brett Tilly Renya, who is a Super 32 champ, and had an all right redshirt season. He beat Vince Turk, a longtime Hawk, and had a close match with North Dakota State Sacks, and those are his most notable matches for sure. There's also Caleb Rathen, who was all over the Iowa scene and national scene as a recruit, so definitely going to be a nice 149 option, coming in to have a fun roster battle between these three. Rathian had a limited schedule last season. He only wrestled in the second half, which was interesting since a lot of the young red shirts at Iowa were at all the opens all over the place. Rathian went one into a scuffle, but won the last chance open at the end of the year, so for sure promising. 157 loses Caleb Young, a three-time All-American and two-time place winner All-American for the Hawks, and his spot will more likely be filled by Sebastian Robles. He had 11-5 true freshman year at opens, and that is pretty good for a red shirt season. Also, I say that a lot on this channel, like, Red shirts could go seven and seven or something like that. And I'll say, eh, that's a pretty good red shirt season. But I do that because not every true freshman can come out and blow out the fields. Most guys need that year to develop. Like Facundo had an all right red shirt season, but he just smashed the US Open in juniors. So it doesn't take long to grow, especially if it's the right kid. And freshmen normally develop a little bit faster than when you're a senior. Alrighty, uh, where was I though? Oh yeah, Robles. He went to a ton of opens, which is promising, but not too many key wins or losses. He went 0 2 at U20 at the U.S. Open, so he still needs some time to grow, and hopefully this offseason will help him build into his spot. Clearly, he's not at the level of Caleb Young just yet, which doesn't help the Hawks very much, but that does not mean Robles can't get there, so there is promise. 165 is super exciting because we will have one of the top Iowa redshirts last season and recruits coming in with Patrick Kennedy. This will be his third year at Iowa, but he is still a freshman with eligibility, so he has a ton of time to grow, and he was looking really good this past year. He smashed through the last chance open, placed at the Southern Scuffle, and won the UNI Open and Cyclone Open, along with pushing Marinelli, a several-time All-American, to the brink in a 3-2 match. Now, I know Marinelli wrestles a lot of guys that close, and they are teammates, so they know what each other does, but it's still noteworthy for sure. Kennedy is definitely the best option moving forward, and being behind guys like Marinelli and Kemmer for sure has grown him to a freshman peak, and he will only grow higher, and I think he could be an All-American threat in a pretty young and deep 165 field. He also almost beat West Virginia All-American Peyton Hall, and he only lost the match 6-4 in sudden victory, so yeah, watch out for Patrick Kennedy. There's also Aiden Riggins, a top 30 big board wrestler coming in, probably a 165 pounder, but he will more than likely redshirt this season. The Nelson Brand situation last year was super confusing, but I think this year should be pretty straightforward, I hope. Iowa's 174 option should be the super aggressive Hawkeye Nelson Brands coming into his junior season athletically. He was 5-1 last year before Kemmer returned and pushed Hay and Hillay to the brink only losing 4-2. He would then tear his shoulder, but like I said, Kemmer would take over the spot once again after the shoulder situation formed. I hope he can recover and develop this offseason to come out with a bang this offseason like he always does in the Iowa lineup. 184 should once again be Abe Asad. I honestly think Abe Asad is still going to be a great option. I heard he was dealing with some injuries last year, so if he can stay healthy this upcoming year and keep it that way the entire year, he could really push to be around a 12 or All-American guy at 184. That's how highly I look up to Abe Asad. He was a high recruit for the lineup, and I think he might actually pay off if he stays a little bit healthy. Plus, at times, Asad has shown signs of greatness, so only time will tell. 197 is sort of a fun weight. Obviously, we have Jacob Warner coming back for his last season after one of the biggest seasons of his life, making the NCAA Finals as the sixth seed and going on an amazing run. He will more than likely be the guy, but there's also Zach Glazer behind him, who had a small sample size of starring experience last year, and then there is top recruit coming in with Colby Franklin, who just placed at U20 Open. But he will probably redshirt and maybe take the spot in 2023, but he will for sure be a good option when his time is called. Warner was a little banged up last year, and I hope he recovers and comes into the season swinging to maybe match those finals points for Iowa, because they will for 
sure need it. However, Ferrari is re-entering the 197 landscape, hopefully next year, so it might be a little difficult for Warner to crack in there. Finally, we reach our big boys at heavyweight, and the story basically ends with Anthony Cassiope. Cassiope had a semi-down season, especially entering the 2022 season as a recent U23 world champ, but regardless, he did add another All-American trophy to his cabinet, and I think he will for sure return to the top eight stand. And honestly, at that way, it's going to come down to matchups. So in my opinion, I honestly think he can make the finals with the right placement or even win the whole tournament. But like the video suggests, it's a little too early to be making finals predictions, especially at heavyweight. In short, I think the Hawkeyes are going to be all right. Thoroughwoods transferring really helps them, like really does help them. This could be potential finals points that they didn't even have this year, considering Ironman was hurt. They also have Spencer Lee back, and he is a dominant force, always scoring 20 plus points easily, especially with rumors of Glory and Vito both bumping up to 133. So that would totally clear out the 125 landscape. Also, I think Cassiope is going to score way more points than just seventh place finisher points, which in the grand scheme of things, isn't really that many. Plus, even though I might not hit Warner to make the finals again, but I would pick him to take third. And in the NCAA scoring system, that's still double digit points, which goes a long way in NCAA scoring. However, now we get a little tricky with the lineup because I think Kennedy and Asad can both slip into all American status. However, it's definitely not going to be easy at their weight classes. They have skills to do it, but will they actually do it? That's the question that we'll just have to wait and see. There's also Max Marin, who's a three time round of 12 guy. So hopefully he can finally slip into that top eight, which would really go a long way for them. Along Along with Nelson Brands, who has beat some All-Americans before and has competed with All-American level guys, so can't count him out either, especially down at 174, which I think is a more natural weight. Triver and Robles both have some improvements to make, but they've already done that before in their redshirt season, so they can for sure be round of 12 or round of 16 guys. And they also have an entire offseason to improve, so there's definitely promise ahead. And then clearly there's the elephant in the room with the Iowa wrestling lineup. They are losing some massive points with their seniors that are leaving, which will be really hard to recover like Caleb Young, Michael Kemmer, Alex Marinelli, and DeSano. I know some of them might not have performed that well this year and didn't score that many points, but they have scored points in the past and they have All-American before, which in the grand scheme of things, they have scored a lot of points for Iowa, so hard to replace. Overall, I don't think they can compete with Penn State, especially with them getting RBY back. I don't know if anyone can really fight that, so it's for sure going to be a race for second, and I'm willing to bet that they can for sure bring home that trophy once again. Like I said, I still think Iowa has a really strong nucleus coming back and gaining that real woods transfer so they'll be just fine and keeping that Iowa tradition alive. Well, all that said, I hope all my Hawkeye fans and other wrestling fans enjoyed this video. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on the future of the Iowa team in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. Now, I hope to see you guys all in the next one. Take care, everyone.